or tape, CDs, DVDs, or our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Sunday afternoon, December the 26th, 1982. Family camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Irma Miller is the speaker of the afternoon. Before His Majesty the King Before His Majesty the King Praise the Lord. Some of you might not know, but Vanessa is a television star. She appeared on television last Sunday singing with the choir up at Conway at the college. So we all watched her. Our mother is the biscuit maker. We call them Nina Biscuits. How many liked those biscuits this morning? Praise the Lord. Let's turn to Joel 2. Glenn was in there this morning, but, but he didn't know too much about anything except the last verse of the chapter, so we won't be repeating ourselves. If I have a subject, I guess I'd say preparing for war. How many want to go into warfare or into the battle? A few of you do, I see. Preparing for war. Everybody got it? Blow you the trumpet in Zion? Sound an alarm? Blast it out? When you sound an alarm, you really... Have you ever heard a fire alarm go off at the, at the fire station? Man, everything starts to blow. Snort. it. They just come out of there, out of those fire departments. Joel is saying, the great and terrible day of the Lord is at hand. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. That's everybody, all. For the day of the Lord cometh, and it is nigh at hand. Are you ready for it? Amen. A day of darkness, gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness. We've seen a lot of that. There's lots of darkness over the people's faces. You walk down the street of hot springs, there's darkness on the people, consternation on the people, confusion on the people, and it's right in the churches too, isn't it? Confusion. Why aren't people healed? Why aren't more people being delivered? Why aren't we doing more for the Lord? Consternation and confusion. But the Lord has a way. He said he'll make a way where there is no way. A day of darkness, gloominess, clouds, thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. God is preparing this great army. He's getting us ready. Now, lots of people don't want to get in this army. But he's calling people to rise up, to get prepared for this great, warfare that's going to come about in the heavenlies and on earth too. This is not a natural a war. This is a spiritual war. A spiritual war. Like we've never seen before. Darkness. But the light is going to shine on the Christians brighter and brighter and brighter. A fire devours before them and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devours the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. 
Now, fire depicts the Almighty God, doesn't it? He appeared to Moses in the burning bush. I'll never forget a few years ago, several years ago, it was in the night. I don't know if I was really awake or asleep. I was just about half and half. And the Lord began, first I heard loud thundering, terrible thundering. And in California where we live, it doesn't really thunder out there. It's not supposed to, I mean. I think it's been doing it this year. But loud thundering. And then the next thing that I heard was fire crackling and popping all around me. All around me. And of course, it frightened me. It frightened me, and I really thought it was the enemy. I thought it was the devil trying to scare me. And I lay there really trembling. And then all of a sudden, the whole room just filled up with the perfume of the Lord. And I realized this scripture was what was happening. A flame of fire around me, leaping in the presence of Almighty God. Now, this is God's army. Now, I know in years back, they used to tell us this is some bad army that's going to come against the church. But that isn't true. This is the army of the Lord. And I, for one, want to be in that army. This is the purified army. This is those that are spotless before the Lord. This is those that he can entrust the hundredfold anointing to. This people, strong in battle array. There is no room in God's army for namby pambies He wants a strong people. He says be strong. He doesn't need anybody that's not going to be faithful. He's looking for the called, the chosen, and the faithful. According to the book of Revelations, he asked many are called and few are chosen. Uh, this morning, Glenn read that, but in the book of Revelations, he adds the faithfulness, the full ones. Those that he can entrust, those that are delivered from pride, those that are delivered from hate, those that are full of faith and not full of fear. That's who he's looking for in this great army. Before this army's faces, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness or darkness. And we see that roundabout all the time. It's fear. Fear will make you turn pale and a blackish cast over you. As the Holy Spirit opens up our spiritual eyes, often we see that pale, deathly black on people's faces, and it's usually fear manifesting. These people shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the walls like men of war. They shall march everyone on his way, and they shall not break their ranks. They're in companies, and they know how to act. They know exactly how to act because they've been taught of the Lord. You know, when you go to boot camp, they march you and they march you and they, they get you totally in step, in total unity. If you'll watch any soldiers marching on the TV or any, any time you watch a parade, they're always in total step and total unity. The body of Christ is far from unity today. They are far from being in step. Elder, elder, any old thing, you know, that's not the way the army of the Lord that God is preparing is going to be, it's going to be in total union, total union of mind, spirit, soul, and body, everything in total unity. Neither shall one thrust another, they shall walk everyone in his own path, and when they fall upon the sword, they won't be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city, they shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon will be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. Now, we haven't walked that way before, have we? We've seen this happen yet, but it's coming in the last days, saith Joel. And the Lord himself, the Lord, shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. There's lots of people haven't bowed to Baal. We're not the one and only. There's lots of people that are being brought into this walk. You realize that? The Lord does not want us to lean on any arm of flesh. It's no big preacher. It doesn't say a thing about some big preacher being in this army, does it? Or some great one. No. It's those that are totally sold out to the Lord, and it could be you and me and any of us right here. That's it in. It's up to us. Do we really want to sell out to Jesus Christ? Do we really want to walk in his steps? Do we really want to listen to that still, small voice? Do we want to follow him wherever he leads us? If any of you have not heard Rachel Cook's testimony in song, uh, you can get it at the tape table. It's especially good for young people. She started out as a 14-year-old uh, Christian girl in the Methodist church, and God advanced her 
I don't really know how she comes to receive the Holy Spirit by the sovereign act of God, I'm sure. And she has, and he called her into the group called God's Boot Camp. How many of you have ever heard of that group? She had hundreds of first a few rebellious ones, and then the few turned into uh, beautiful, obedient Christians, and then they just multiplied and multiplied. And God kept moving her back, so to speak, to square one, because she got so involved with those people that she thought, that was just the greatest thing she wanted to do that the rest of your life. It was just like Peter on the, on the mountain of transfiguration. He just wanted to stay up there all the time because it was so wonderful. But we stay up on those highs just so long, and then we must come down and walk them out. All you people that were delivered this morning, all you people that were delivered last night, next week is the time to walk it out when you get home. To walk it out when you get home. And Rachel, every time, everything was just going perfect, and everything was just going beautiful for her. He'd send her back to square one. And then he'd send her somewhere else. And, and when you hear that testimony, you're going to weep and you're going to laugh. You're going to cry. And you're going to see yourself. Every time when you think you just can settle down on the, on the great things the Lord has done for you, he's going to uproot you and move you in a different path and start you all over again in another angle to, to purify you and to purge you and to see if you're going to obey him, mainly. When he'd call her name, Rachel, she'd say, yes, Lord. And then he would start telling her, I want you to go to the Philippines. Oh, I don't want to go to the Philippines. I want to stay here and be a nurse. She didn't want to be a nurse at first. But once she got to be a nurse and started casting demons out of the insane, and, and uh, I'll tell you part of this so it'll make you really hungry. You'll want to get, hear that tape. She started, she was crying when she first went in there because she had to uh, wash the bedpans. And so she, she was crying to the Lord. And she said, Lord, I want to do this. I want to go preach. He said, you can preach right here. So he started having her. He told her, you remember about Paul with the handkerchiefs and the aprons? Yes, Lord. But I want you to mark these bedpans, and I want you to pray over every one of them. And then you watch me what I'm going to do. So she put a red mark in the bottom of every one of them. And up and down the hall, people would suddenly begin to get healed that were real sick in these hospital rooms. And she would hear about it. You know, rumors about miracles go fast. And she'd hear about it. And she'd run up there and check the bedpan and see if it had a red mark on it. And what do you think? It did. <laughs> Praise God. And she was so happy there, she could have stayed there forever. And then God just kept moving her and moving her. And it's a tremendous uh, tape of the dealings of God. And we're all in the dealings of God. He calls us to do certain things, and we just get really uh, rooted and grounded and shaped up to do that thing that he has called us to do. And then all of a sudden, he changes the calling. But one thing he does say, you stay in the calling that he's called you in. Until he moves you. Don't you try to be moving yourself. You'll get into really trouble. But anyway, that's just a sideline. Let's go on. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Do you think this army... I think every one of these people are going to hear what he says. For his camp is very great. He is strong and executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? I don't know if any of us sitting here can really abide it or not. But I certainly want to do my best. I want to try my very best. I want to listen to every teaching that I hear. And as the Holy Spirit speaks to me with that still, small voice, I want to try to move into that area. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn you even to me with all of your heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. You know, they used to have the mourner's bench. There used to be a lot of mourning in churches. There's not much mourning, is there? Is there? Very little fasting. And very little weeping. He says, rend your heart. If you rend something, you really tear into it, don't you? You really tear it up. He says, rend your heart and not your garments. Get down into the innermost being of your heart and, and be very honest with your... The people who get the most deliverance around here are the honest ones. The ones that just come and say, I need help, I'm this, I'm troubled... I'm a weak Christian. I'm, and just admit what's wrong with them. And right away, the Lord sees that repentant heart. He sees that honest heart, and he just moves to change their lives. And turn to the Lord your God. Don't turn to men. The Bible says that God will put a curse on you if you lean on the arm of flesh. Now, you think God doesn't put curses on you? And on me, he really does. You start leaning on just one preacher, and you'll see what happens. 
You'll be under God's curse and not under his blessings. Turn to the Lord your God. Look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Don't look at men. Only look at the Jesus that's in men. The only part you want to be looking for, the Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the fire of God that's in people. That's all that you want to look into men. But look into God, for he is gracious and merciful. How many know that God is merciful? It says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Can you be as merciful <clears throat> to others as God is merciful to you? It's hard, isn't it? It's hard. It's hard to be give mercy. But Jesus has been very merciful to every one of us. He says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. God is slow to anger. He puts up with us so much. I don't know how he's ever put up with me so long, but he's put up with all of you, hasn't he? He puts up with our ignorance. He puts up with our shortcomings. He puts up with our sins. He, he's slow to anger, but believe you me, when he lowers the boom and his wrath begins to fall, I know it when it falls on me. He knows how to spank his children. He really knows how, and I know what it feels like. And I, I'm always saying, Lord, I want to obey you. I'll promise I'll be good if you'll just show me exactly what you want me to do. I don't want to be spanked anymore. Have you ever had your children say, I'll be good, Mommy, I'll be good, I'll be good? They'll be ever so bad, but you start your wrath down on them, and immediately, well, praise God, there's Ruth Sides, love, all the way from Indiana. God bless you. We were looking for you tonight. Praise God. <laughs> oh, that's right. When the wrath of God starts to come down on us, we start crying. Oh, my, I get phone calls this morning. I got a phone call from California. She'd done some things that she knew was wrong. And she was in a terrible shape. She was crying out for mercy and prayer. And God was just so merciful to her. Just so merciful. And she had left some evil spirits back in her. And they were screaming and crying and ranting on the phone. But they came out, praise God, because she was repentant. And the blood of Jesus started washing away all those sins that she'd committed and started to deliver her. And I praise God for that. The Lord is very kind. Are you always kind? Is everybody here always kind? And repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Here's this blow the trumpet by him. Sanctify a fast. Now, I'll tell you, Thursday, we sanctify a fast around here. So you start telling your body and the God of your belly that we're fasting Thursday morning and Thursday noon. Start preparing for this that's coming. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children. We have wonderful children's deliverance meetings around here. We may just have a deliverance service Thursday. And those that suck the breast, that's the tiny ones, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, the Bible says we're all able ministers, are we? What's this? Let the ministers of the Lord wait between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach. You know, some things that have happened in the body of Christ, the sinners look at it and say, Who needs that? That's Christianity. Isn't that true? It's been a reproach to God that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they stay among the people? Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you, if anybody's afraid of Russia attacking, this is it, this will console you, far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill favor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, and be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid. In other words, be fearless. Ye beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine... Uh, yields their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. 
For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain, and the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I, wine, wine is a symbol of joy, isn't it? The new wine. Oil is the anointing of the Lord, the oil of the Holy Spirit. Wheat uh, is where we get our bread. This is this word right here. And I will restore to you the, the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat of plenty. I watch people's countenances change. I watch you from year to year and camp to camp, you that come alive. I see your growth and your countenance change. You know the Lord promises to give us a healthy countenance. When you're all down and there's evil spirits are tormenting you, your countenance is not happy, is it? It isn't of joy. It's, it's you just all downcast and downtrodden. But he says he's going to restore us. How many are being restored? How many know for a fact you're being restored? You're being changed. Praise God. Isn't that beautiful? That's enough to praise the Lord for all afternoon. Praise you, Jesus. Let's just praise him a moment. Thank you, Lord, for your change, Lord. Thank you. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We praise 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 you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for having mercy upon us, Lord, upon this people here this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for restoration for what the palmer worm, the canker worm, has eaten upon us. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go down to verse 28. He says, He'll, It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. How many of here? How many here are our second generation Pentecostals? Anybody? Yes, yes. Your parents were Pentecostals. She's third generation. Praise God. You're. You're second generation, third generation. I'm second generation. And Becky is. Praise God. I'm sure a lot of you. Your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out of my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Now, if you've lived in California and watched them shoot off the rockets from Port Wyneme or up by Santa Barbara, they go up in big clouds of fire and smoke, and they stay there for hours. That smoke, all kinds of figures in the sky, and that's only the test. When the real thing is shot off, it is really something else. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and terrible day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now, that scripture, everybody should learn that scripture and, and, and keep it in their heart. Ponder it. Ponder it. In Mount Zion. That doesn't mean out here in these Babylonian churches that don't teach the Holy Ghost. There's no deliverance there. There's salvation there. He says, come out of Babylon. Come out of her, my people. Get out. Let go of it. Let go of it. Go where the Holy Spirit is moving. Now, as we prepare for war, now I know a lot, of, a lot of people sitting here, I can see some of you don't want to prepare for war at all. You think everything is going to be hunky-dory and we're all just going to live a great, joyful life. That isn't the way it's going to be, people. I have to tell you the truth. We're coming into warfare like we've never been in. Our weapons are not carnal, not up in our head. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. That's up in the heavenly, these strong ones. We're sort of fighting skirmishes now. We have Now and then we have some real strong ones around here that come in here. Really strong powers in people. But... As a whole, we haven't seen anything yet, I don't believe. I really don't believe that we have seen anything. What are our weapons? He gave us his name, didn't he? Jesus. And the Word, who is Jesus. Jesus is the Word. He gave us his blood when he was crucified. He said, his blood availeth. We can come to Jesus with our sins. Uh, as you, if you sin, and, and I presume that all of you will admit that we all sin sometime or other. Some of you may just barely be saved, and you may find yourself sinning. Don't condemn yourself, but go right to Jesus with it. Say, Lord, I told a lie, a little white lie, Lord. I admit to it, Jesus. Would you please wash me 
cleanse me and make me pure and white before you, Lord, because I lied. I don't want to do that, Lord. Deliver me. He will right away. He will right away. And then you command that lying spirit to leave you and not ever come back again. And you watch yourself. Guard yourself. We have the Word of God. We have the gifts of the Spirit. The other day, we were praying for somebody. And right out of my innermost being came the Holy Spirit speaking right out through me in English and commanded a certain spirit to come out of this person. I would have never said it out of the head, the carnal part of my head. It was the Holy Ghost, the gifts of the Spirit operating that saw that, that I would never dream that it was in the person. Some things are obvious. Some things are naturally obvious of what people need deliverance of. But some things are so hidden and so deep that only the Holy Ghost can show you. And as that was called out, it made a big manifestation. And I was truly shocked. I thought, oh, my, where did that come from? Why would I say that? And I went away right after the prayers. And when I come back, they started telling me, you wouldn't believe this. You just wouldn't believe this. How this fall on, on her head when she was ice skating when she was young and how this spirit had come in there. A lot of times when we're injured, that's when the spirits will come in. And they'll make us think it's because we've been hurt, but they'll work there and work there and work there. And that's what this one had done. And only the Holy Ghost could have ever let us know how to pray for that girl in that situation. Praise God for the gifts of the Spirit. How many here have not lately had the gifts of the Spirit stirred up in you? A lot of people need the gifts of the Spirit stirred. We need to stir them up in ourselves all the time. Stir up the gifts. Stir up the gifts. Because, you know, there's something that fights against the gifts of the Spirit. There's an enemy that fights against the gifts of the Spirit. And he wants us, this enemy would like for us to use our carnal thinking. But the Holy Spirit, God has given us these gifts. Jesus is the nine gifts of the Spirit, and he lives within us. And if we will just let him come up and come forth in us, then we'll really know how to pray perfectly all the time. And the fruits of the Spirit. We need love. We need joy, we need peace, we need long-suffering, we need patience, we need all of the fruits of the Spirit to deliver God's people, don't we? Every one of them, we need all of them, because the devil has already promised a lot of you around so much you don't need any hard, harsh caring. You need some tender, loving care by the Lord Jesus, and only the Lord Jesus can give you that. Now, there are times when the Lord speaks harshly to people. To stop him. He has spoken harshly to me. I think if anybody has ever had it, really had it, how many have ever had Derek Prince read you out? He knows how to do it in that English sternness army. He was in the army a long time. And he really knows how to read you out. But I praise God for people who read me out because it makes me think what's in me. I don't say that's the way to treat everybody all the time, but sometimes we have to really be told where we understand right from the sergeant that's wrong and you better stop it but we need to learn to speak the word of God our anointing will come as we learn to say it is written Satan and then we say rightly dividing the word of truth what is written Satan has to listen to that and he knows he does your personal victory will only come and your anointing will only come to pray for others as you get delivered yourself whatever you're delivered in you can deliver others in if you're committing adultery every other week, you can never deliver an adulterous person. You wouldn't have any authority. Satan would just laugh at you. I've seen him laugh at people and say, you've got that yourself, right out of the person they were trying to pray for, and that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> if you are cheating and lying, I had a girl call me yesterday, bless her heart, and she wanted help so bad. She said, would you please pray for me because I write bad checks all the time. Well... The Holy Spirit right away said cheating, lying, stealing, a con spirit. Just rattled them off. She said, yes, yes, yes. And then we started to pray for her over the phone, and she was delivered. Now, there are some deliverances that you have to go back and make restitution for. And that's one of them, writing bad checks. That's wrong. It's against the statutes of America. And the banks, she said, but the banks are cheating me. They charge me $10 every time I write a bad check. Well, 
That's punishment. That's some punishment, but we need more punishment sometimes. But your personal victory will only come as you get delivered in the various areas. And then, you know why? If you're a 30-fold Christian, that means you've just been saved. And there's a lot of 30-fold Christians living out in Christendom, out here in all these churches. They won't receive the Holy Spirit, and they fight it, so they just stay 30-fold. That means they're 70% below standard, that's right, and 70% controlled by the enemy. 30% just controlled by the Lord, and that's just barely in by the skin of your teeth, I would say. And the 60-fold Christian are those that have received the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, and then they start moving on up to the 70, 80... I am in the hundredfold. Well, the closer you get up to the hundredfold, the more the battalions of Satan's going to come out at you. He's going to come at you in every direction. And you need to be rooted and grounded in the Word of God so you can answer him. And as you read the Word, you will see things in there. The Word delivers you and cleans you. As you read the Word, you will be cleansed to a, an extent. There are many things that cannot be uh, cast out. You have to be just reading the Word will wash your mind, will wash you, and you'll get a lot of deliverance. May, you may not call it deliverance, but that's really what it is. The washing of the Word. One day, this great commander-in-chief is going to say advance toward the enemy. And I want to be one of those that's ready to advance to the enemy. There's no retreating in Jesus. Every one of you right here sitting here, you should never, ever think about retreating. How many here have thoughts of backsliding? A lot of people do, you know. It's no... I mean, if you do, you do. But see, that's the enemy talking to you. We don't need to have thoughts of backsliding, but if you do, you need help. And we're here to help you. We don't want to retreat. We want to advance. Really, we've only just fought the privates, I feel. But he's wanting us to come up higher and fight the generals, those living up in the high areas of rulership. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody's praying back there in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pray in the spirit. That's good. Bacusa <laughs> At any moment, we could be faced with, with a principality. At any moment, we could be faced with a fallen angel, a prince. And that's what we need to be ready for. Because when they come, you can cut the blackness with a knife. It is so bad. We've had a few experiences around here with some fallen angels, and it's not very pretty, and it's very... You can feel that terrible power and darkness. It takes a lot of prayer to plow through that to bind those up and cast them out. But praise God, he gives us the authority, doesn't he? As he, the Lord Jesus, I think he sits up there and he says, I'm going to try now, and they came to the Bible camp with a stronger power, a stronger general, a principle from the heavenlies and see how they are going to react. And you see, that's what we do in, in boot camp. If you never had any trials, you'll never be an overcomer. If, if there's nothing to come against, if there's no enemy, why, we could just live, you know, nice. But when there is an enemy, I take it that every one of you will join in prayer, praying for deliverance for the person, wherever that spirit is, like this morning. It was a beautiful deliverance this morning, a lot of deliverances this morning. 
and last night, a lot of deliverances. And it isn't to be looked around at all the time. It's to be in prayer. Because when one portion of the body is suffering, then everybody should feel that. You should feel that. That's the way you'll move into intercessory prayer. If you can feel what somebody else is feeling in their body. When you feel, sometimes when we're praying, we might get a terrible pain in our head. And right away, uh, it's usually a migraine headache spirit in the person we're praying for. And you are feeling that. The Holy Spirit is allowing you to feel what they feel. There's a scripture that says, if you sit where they sit for a moment. Like when, when all of these people were flooded out. If you can have compassion on people. If you can just think for one moment and sit. Or look at the, their houses that are blown away and you can sit and, and feel that. Then you can pray for them better. You can pray for them better. The first place to begin in deliverance is yourself. Casting those things out of yourself. Now you, some people, and I know it was very hard for me to learn how to get the evil spirits out of myself. I knew when they come in, but I would always not quite know how to get them out without having to to go to somebody to pray with me. Now, that's perfectly all right for you to go, but you may not always have somebody when the evil one attacks you. So you need to learn how to get these spirits out of yourself. And here is one, one, the way I do it. Now, this may not be always the right way or the way the Lord would tell you or teach you. This is what he has taught me. The man is an evil spirit, I feel it. It may be around me or it might have come in me. I begin to pray and repent. That's not our style, you know. It wasn't just for the early Christians. It's for all of us. Daily repentance won't hurt you. You may not even know what you've done. You may just feel evil coming in at you, and you may not even know if you've done anything or not. You Maybe you haven't done anything. Maybe it was uh, 160 years ago, your forefathers that hated God. You're bearing their sins and iniquities right down today. But if you begin to repent like Daniel did, he brought his own sins up before the Lord. Lord, I bring my own sins up before you. I don't know what this is or why it's coming upon me. But Lord Jesus, I ask you to cleanse me and cleanse my blood. Lord, cleanse my nation. Cleanse my home. Cleanse the sins of my forefathers. My blood, the iniquities. And as you start to pray like that, you're going to feel the power of God come down on you. He's going to hear you and he's going to start answering your prayer. And all of a sudden, then, you'll feel that authority, and you can say, Get thee behind me, Satan. Get out of here right now. I will not entertain that thought you've given me anymore. You go, in Jesus' name. You have... Well, if you're in the war, you're fighting. Fighting means doesn't mean placid, does it? It doesn't mean just, you know, easy going. If you're in a fight, you're in a fight. You come against the enemy like you mean it. Speak to him and say, It is written, Satan. I've submitted to my God. I resist you, and you're going to have to flee right now in Jesus' name. And mean business, and he will go. <coughs> the Lord wants us to be full of faith and faithful to whatever he calls us to do. Now, really, I am not the type to, to be in deliverance, really, when you think about it. I'm not the type. Patty's laughing back there, and Kevin. I'm really not the type. But the Lord called us into it, and here we are. I would have preferred to live in California the rest of my life. But God called us to Arkansas. And God has put us here. But we are the least, least of people that, that should have had this job. Only God knows why he did it, because we sure don't. But he put us here, and he has given us an anointing to pray for people and a compassion for people. And I can't even hardly believe it myself. Some days, days I sit up there in that office and I think, what if we had never obeyed the Lord? I just wonder if we'd even be alive today. What if? But I praise God I obeyed because I wouldn't have never met most of you. Praise God. <laughs> he wants us to have him so strong in us and this virtue so strong in us and this power and authority and to be brave and courageous. So when, when we lay our hands on somebody, the virtue of the Lord goes right out of us into them and rouse out the enemy. You know, fire, the, he was talking about the Holy Ghost and fire. I love for this fire of the anointing to burn in me all the time. I don't know how to keep it burning all the time. I guess I would just go 
climb in the walls and do a lot of things that the Lord wouldn't be ready for me to do. But some days the fire blazes in me so strong, and anything I pray about or anyone I pray for, it just happens. You know, they're healed, they're delivered, it's easy. When this anointing flows up through us, and I'm praying that the Lord will give it to me all the time. And when he sees fit, I know he will. But I've had a taste of it. I've had a taste of it, and I want it all the time. I'm hungry for the Holy Ghost and fire. So really, because the fire of God is God himself, his holy presence in us and around us. He wants us to have some knowledge about our enemy. You know, a lot of people say, well, well, you ought to be talking about the devil. Don't give him any, any power. Well, if you don't know who your enemy is, you're not going to get very far in this army. What good is an army if they don't know their enemy? In the United States Army, when they go out to battle, they know who their enemy is. And they know everything they can about him. They study him. And they know. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When I think about sitting for about 35 years in the Assemblies of God churches, where my dad pastored, and other churches where he, after we were married, we, we moved to California and we sat in a lot of Assembly of God churches. When I think about all the years that I sat with a lack of knowledge, wondering why things would happen to us, and wondering why as Christians they were happening, but it never dawned on me at all that it was the devil. I never saw the, my enemy. I never knew who it was. I knew that something was wrong, but the enemy would come with self-condemnation, but I, I would just condemn myself, and I'd think that was just me. Well, what's wrong with you, and you're not saved, and you're not this, or you're not that? And those thoughts would go through my mind, and it would be the enemy. And when I started to hear teaching on, on deliverance, I started to see way back in years ago how the enemy was attacking us, and we didn't even know it. Sometimes we're the last to know that the enemy is attacking us. And that's why we need the gifts of the Spirit, so the, the various Christians can pray for us. When you come here for prayer, the, the people here that are trained in deliverance, I would hope that all the time they would be moving in the Holy Spirit and in the discerning of Spirit so they will know how to pray. And we only learn that by doing. And if you make a mistake, it is not a big sin. God will forgive you. But try to speak in the Spirit, try to move in the Spirit when you're praying for others so that the enemy will be bound and cast out with a lot of, without a lot of frost and free-for-all. Now, I don't mind manifestations. I think they're good. I think it lets everybody in the audience see that there is a devil. But I don't think it has to go on and on and on and you have to play around with them, tell them to shut their mouth and come out in Jesus' name. Give no place to the devil. We don't need to be listening to him for hours. Talk out of a person. They need to be bound and cast out and gotten rid of. Where is, what is our handbook? You know, everybody has a handbook in the army to know what to do. The Bible is our handbook. That's right. You know, everybody has a handbook in the army to know what to do. The Bible is our handbook. That's right. The Bible is our handbook. You know, a long time ago, it was very strange. I was reading an article about the Army of the Lord. Oh, I suppose it's 13 years ago at least. Nasty, it went all over about the general and the private, and the sergeant, and all different things. And it told everything about the Army of the Lord. And it told about the CIA what they did. At the end, you had to write down a little thing what you'd like to join in God's army. So I read everything over, and I decided I'd like to be in the CIA. Now, why I put that down, I really don't know. But the CIA goes behind the enemy lines. He, they find out what the enemy does, how they work, and then they come back and tell the rest of the army. Well, I signed up for that not paying too much attention to what I was signing, and it wasn't very long until <laughs> things started to happen. I was telling the girls the other day, I had them roaring on the office floor. Uh, the first thing that happened, I think, the first thing that happened, I was at the Full Gospel Businessmen's Convention in Fresno, 
And we were right across from the bar, but they closed the bar down when the full gospel went into that particular hotel. And I was running the book and tape table. And the convention hall girl from uptown was taking the reservation. So it was noon, and everybody went way, way around on the other side to the smorgasbord. And she and I were left alone. And I had to stay by the table, and she had to stay by the registration. And so Glenn was going to come back and, and let me go. He either bring me something, I don't remember. Anyway, all of a sudden, I see a girl coming up the long, the long ramp. Now, this was about, I think this was in 1965 or 6. It was Labor Day weekend. It was so hot in Fresno. If you know about Fresno, it can get 120 there easy. And so here she comes up the ramp, and she had on a leopard coat. <clears throat> she had on purple uh, slacks. Those were the days when nobody wore slacks to church or any place, hardly. She had on a white chiffon scarf tied around her head and hanging draped down to the floor. And I looked at her, and I thought, well, I guess she's going to open the bar. But in, but in the meantime, the lady who was registering everybody had asked me... Uh, if I'd watch her table while she went to the power room. So I said, all right. And I was sitting over there by the typewriter, and this, this woman comes straight up to me. <clears throat> and I looked at her, and, and she said, is this where the full gospel meeting is? And I said, yes. And uh, she said, could I register? And I said, yes. And I handed her a paper to fill out. She filled it out. She handed it back to me, and I looked at it. I couldn't read one word on there. And I said, what is your name? And a voice, so help me, right off of her shoulder, said, I'm Jackie, I'm Jackie, I'm Jackie. <laughs> in total fear and trembling, I said, what did you say? She said, I didn't say anything. Well, talk about devastation. I was devastated. I wasn't ready for that. I guess the Lord thought I was. So finally, I made out something, and I typed it up. When Glenn came back, I told him, and he just looked at me and uh, went on about his taping. And, boy, I was really <clears throat> in consternation. I had no idea. I knew it was an evil spirit speaking off of her, out of her, on her shoulder or something, but I didn't know what to do about it. And I finally went to the man who had first brought us into deliverance about two months before, and I told him about it. I may have called him on the phone. I don't know. But anyway, he said, oh, don't you know what spirit that was? And I said, no. Oh. He said, that's the spirit of fashion. And it's a Jackie Kennedy spirit when it said, I'm Jackie, I'm Jackie. I said, oh, I land. And about two or three weeks later, on the front of Vogue magazine, that exact picture of those clothes and everything came out with Jackie Kennedy wearing them. You, as you recall, if you think back, she led the, the style and the fashion for years. Well, that, to say the least, uh upset me, <laughs> I guess is the word. And constantly the Lord was showing me things and moving me into the gifts of discerning of spirits, and I had not one drop of knowledge or wisdom about how to use them. I would just see things, and I'd be so startled that I wouldn't know what to do, and i usually go <gasps> like this and talk. <laughs> and a lot of times I would be blurting it out, you know, <laughs> in the wrong places because I didn't have any wisdom. I had no knowledge. One time, Derek Prince came up to me at Denver at a big convention. He's walked past the book table. He had ways of doing that to me. And I guess the Lord just really worked me over through him. But anyway, he looked at me and he says, Irma. I said, yes. He says, you have a python wrapped around you. Well, <laughs> I looked. I didn't see it. <laughs> Boy, I didn't want that thing on me. And I was trying to get everybody who come up to the book table to give it off of me. <laughs> And that went over sort of like a lead balloon. But finally, somebody prayed for me and praise God it left. You know where that came from? That came from three generations back from my great-grandmother, who was from Germany and read tea leaves and read palms. Spirit of divination, see? Visited down to the third and the fourth generation. A lot of things that happened to... All of us is not happening because of what we've ever done. Because I had never, ever been to a fortune teller. Never. And a few weeks after that, or sometime after that, Derek came to our house and he, he uh, stayed ten days. And he said to Glenn and I both, you're both under the power of a fortune teller. 
We had never, ever, either one of us been to a fortune teller, but we said, well, we don't want to be under any power like that. So they, he prayed for us, and this tent just lifted off of me. And I felt so bright. I could see better. I could think better. Everything about me was just awakened. And when he prayed for Glenn, I could see even better because I was getting it, you know, both ways. Well, it wasn't very long until we found out that Glenn's mother had been to a fortune teller when she was 17. And it was about six months later, we came to uh, near Quincy, Illinois, or Quincy, Illinois, to visit my parents, who were Assembly God ministers. And I asked, at a big family reunion, right out of me, I blurted out, anybody in this family ever been to a fortune teller? And right away, my mother said, oh, I was when I was 17 years old. And I said, did you know Derek Prince picked that up on me? And, oh, she hit the ceiling. And it, t- it took me an awful long time to learn that that the devil talks right out of people and your relatives especially and you can't believe it you think it's them that was no more her speaking because she said the very same words my mother-in-law said you tell that old Derek Prince he doesn't know what he's talking about everything's under the blood we've been saved all these years and we don't need him telling us things well my dad sort of came to my rescue and and then my mother said, well, your great-grandmother from Germany, she used to read palm, your palms and, and uh, tea leaves. See, that was visited down upon us from both sides. And I dare say in four generations, 160 years, that anything could be visited down on any of us sitting here in this congregation. We have prayed for people with incest spirits that have come for 10 generations, 400 years. You may think this is spooky. But it's very real, and that is what is holding us back as the body of Christ are these things that we have inherited from our forefathers that we know nothing about. Because if you're hungry enough for the Lord, you're going to repent about everything you know to repent about, aren't you? Really. I know that Christians, they try, and they repent, and they repent, and they can't seem to get through. And the reason is, is we are finding out more and more, and we know so little yet, but it's coming from generations back in our bloodline. It's iniquity. Look how spiritual Job was. But it was iniquity, wasn't it? Look how Satan was in heaven. But when iniquity was found in him. Iniquity seems to be a combination of rebellion against God, lawlessness, uh, sinning with the tongue. The tongue is a world of iniquity. James says, lashing out. Satan uses our tongue to lash out at our fellow men. All of these things are holding back the body of Christ. And as for me and my household and the household of faith here today, I am ready to declare war on the enemy. I am ready to get rid of every bit of iniquity, every bit of powers that are generated by these spirits. Uh, I think it was a few weeks ago. I can't remember. So many things happen here in one week, and we don't write them down, and I shouldn't forget about them, but the powers of smoking. How many ever, ever smoked in their life? Let's see. Be honest. I'm not going to do anything. Well, as an Assembly of God preacher's daughter, you don't smoke, and you don't drink, and you didn't, you were long sleeves and you did this and you did that but that didn't make me any holier made me rebellious probably Derek used to come by and say you're so rebellious inside of you and I wouldn't know I always minded my parents I didn't know why I was so rebellious but you see he could see that rebelling against the Lord's word not obeying the Lord's word is rebellion isn't it it is but the Lord is bringing all of us into a very tedious walk before him, I believe. Tedious walk before him. He wants us to uncover and plow up this fallow ground where all of these little varmints are living. Little, Have you ever plowed up, been out on fresh plowed ground? All these little bugs and worms and tiny little things buzzing around in there. And we've got so much fallow ground in us that needs to be plowed up. And I was just telling... Uh, a young minister back here this afternoon, if you really want to be plowed up, 
Get those Kelly Garner cakes back there. He'll plow into you. Man, he'll tear you up. <laughs> but it's so good. It is so good to be torn up. It makes us get out of our lackadaisical, you know, everything is so lovely. You know, we have such a facade on. Everything is not so lovely in the body of Christ. Everybody is seething, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, according to Romans 8. The whole world, the creation, animals, everything are travailing. And Jesus wants to come forth in you and me with all of the anointing of God. If you're full of lust, you need deliverance. If you're full of fear, you need deliverance. I tell you, I had so much fear. The first time I ever heard an evil spirit speak out of a person, it scared me half to death. I ran upstairs in Chicago at the Hilton Hotel, grabbed two tranquilizers, swallowed them, jumped in bed, covered up my head, and I was already a grandmother at that time. And that's not the way grandmothers are supposed to act. And an evil spirit said to me, Verbally, out loud, it said, now you've gotten into false doctrine, you better jump out the window. And I answered that evil spirit, no, I'm too smart for that. And that suicidal spirit never did come back to me again. That's how the Lord delivered me that time. I meant it, no, I won't do that. But I didn't understand what was going on. But the evil spirits in me made me fear and tremble. I thought it was me. I mean, I was shaking like a leaf. And I needed deliverance. I knew... The minute I heard the first ministries that came forth, the minute I heard them, I knew I needed deliverance. And I knew my husband needed deliverance, because I have to live with him, you see. I knew that. How many of you wives know your husbands need deliverance? How many of you husbands know your wives need deliverance? (laughs) Well, we all need it. We all need it. And I remember I started a while ago to say how, how... how spooky it is to think that there's something inside of you that can speak out of you, and it's not the real you. That's spooky, I think. And I remember uh, we were under a man named Brother Duncan from up in Washington who really come and prayed for us the first time for deliverance in our home, and we got tremendous deliverance, and we were also under Derek Prince for quite a while, his teaching. And both of them, we gleaned much and learned so much, and they helped us so much and prayed for us so much. But one time, Glenn said to me, they told me I don't have any evil spirits. Derek Prince told me that, and so did Brother Duncan. And I looked at him, you know, with my sharp tongue, and I said, well, I don't care what they say. I know you've got them because I have to live with you. (laughs) Well, I spewed around about that for quite a while, and one day I walked right up to Brother Duncan, and I said, why do you keep telling Glenn he doesn't have any evil spirits? I have to live with him, and I know he does. And he just laughed, and he laughed, and he laughed, and laughed. He just looked down at me and just kept laughing. I said, what's the matter? He said, don't you know who that is talking out of your husband? I just was in total limbo for a minute. I just looked at him. I said, you mean the devil? He said, that's right. I said, oh, no. He said, that's right. See, I knew he had them, but I didn't want them to talk out of my husband <laughs> to me. Praise God. I learned that, though, the hard way. That's imprinted on my mind. I I realize that the evil spirits can speak out of people. I can tell when they're speaking out of people on the telephone. Sometimes they hiss. They'll hiss all the time during their conversation. They're hissing. They don't even know that. But see, the Holy Spirit lets me hear that. And I understand it, and I don't get panicky anymore. I just start praying for them. But I have learned by experience. Everything that we know about deliverance, I have tried to enter in and get delivered in that realm myself. Then... When people come to be prayed for, I have authority. I don't have everything cleaned out of myself, and I'm not standing up here telling you I have. I need lots more help, and as I would get it all today if I could. I'd let every one of you come up here and lay me in the spirit and pray and pound and scream over me. But you see, the Lord says, I'll drive them out little by little, and he's not going to let Irma Miller tell him when he's going to drive them all out of me. He will tell me, and he will do it as he pleases. But I never cease to cry out, Lord, deliver me from all evil. I never cease. I want more and more and more until the total anointing is pouring out through me. And I'm sure all of you do. Now, we've talked about iniquity, our tongue. We've talked about sins, which we know that we can repent of. And the Lord forgives us and he forgets. And we don't, 
If those things keep being brought up and brought up and recurring and recurring, it's because we probably haven't forgiven someone. The other day, Glenn got a tremendous deliverance uh, about somebody that he hadn't forgiven since he's a little boy. And every once in a while, we all have a round of deliverance. Here a few weeks ago when, uh, when uh, the ministers were here from North Carolina, we went out to eat after the camp meeting was over, and we all gathered up in the apartment where they were staying, a few, a few of us, and uh, he began to come against, well, Glenn and another girl always seemed to have a low-grade fever. And so this minister began to come against fevers. And then we began to call out various kinds of fevers. Well, you can't believe what manifested with underlying fever. I mean, almost everybody there manifested. I mean, strong manifestations. Underlying fever comes from drinking milk that the cows have not been properly tested and they've had uh, Bangs disease and you get underlying fever and you run a low-grade fever and it can kill you. It's, and you run malaria fever, you know, and you might be a carrier and all these different things. He called out every kind of fever. It was amazing. It was amazing how much deliverance there was, and we had never, ever thought about it before. How many have ever heard of coming against all kinds of fevers? See, those are infirmities, infirmities, and we needed deliverance. And, and when he would come against some kind of fevers, their noses, I wasn't looking at myself, but I was sitting there watching, watching people and praying for different ones, and their noses would just all crinkle up and see, you know that allergy you get in your sinuses? A lot of that is coming, uh, was, was a type of a fever. Underlip fever coming from milk. You know, the doctor sometimes will take you off of milk if you're inclined to have sinus trouble. I just threw that in. I hadn't, I hadn't certainly planned to talk about that this afternoon, but, but that was something new that we learned. Fevers. How many here know that they carry low-grade fever all the time? Anybody? Your lips get kind of parched and you, you just feel kind of feverish. We'll pray about that this afternoon. There are, there are many, many other things. And the Lord, last night, when he got on the messengers, or God's angels are going to come forth, sent by God, and pull out everything that offends. Everything that offends. We all have things in us that offend others in the body of Christ. And we want all offensive things out of us. And Lord, that's my prayer this afternoon. Lord, take everything that is offensive out of all of us. Everything that, that deters the moving of the Holy Ghost, everything, everything, and all of the iniquities, all of the iniquities in us from our forefathers, just because mother had TB doesn't mean that you need to have TB. Just because mother had uh, rheumatism doesn't mean you have to have it. If you have it, you don't need to keep it. You need to command it to go in the spirit of infirmity to leave. Just because we have inherited these things doesn't mean because Jesus made a way. How did he make a way to take care of iniquity? Who knows? Who knows? He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our iniquities. And all these bruises that is in us, that old, you know, a bruise carries dark, dead blood, doesn't it? And that's where the enemy can enter, through bruises that we've had as childhood. In, in, from little children, we're bruised, we're hurt. We're torn up. We're rejected, maybe. And all of those things, the enemy can't enter. But Jesus was bruised for our iniquities, and we do not have to carry these bruises. We do not have to allow the enemy to live in those bruises. We need to get rid, forgive, uh, get rid of all of those things. And the Lord wants to do it this afternoon. He wants to heal us. He wants to change us. He wants to deliver us in every area. Let's all just bow our heads in, in prayer. How many here this afternoon will put up your hand and say, yes, I need some help, I need some deliverance? If anybody has to leave, I realize some people have to go. If you have to go, that's all right. But if you don't have to go, stay in prayer, and uh, the Lord is going to deliver this afternoon. He's going to deliver you this afternoon. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. I bring every sin of our forefathers for 400 years up to you. I ask you to forgive this body of Christ this afternoon for everything that their forefathers have done in the last 400 years that has displeased you or if there's been anyone that hated you and they have 
are now bearing this iniquity that they can have no have never done anything against you, Lord. But because of the sins and iniquities of their forefathers, they're bearing this. I ask you, Jesus, to come down with your precious blood, with your mighty hand, and cleanse. Cleanse out all of the old debris, Lord, that's in there, the old dried blood of these hurts. Let your precious anointing come upon all of us. Heal and cleanse by your precious blood, by your stripes, Lord, that you bore, we're healed. Let everybody that sits in here that has an infirmities in their flesh, let them come against and hate those infirmities with fury. Let them hate the enemy that's behind their sickness. Lord, put some pressure on that enemy by your mighty hand, by your name, and by your word, and by your blood. Put pressure on that enemy, Jesus. And we ask that everyone who wants to be delivered and helped will be. I thank you, Jesus, for the people sitting here. I thank you for bringing more in, Lord, through this rain and protecting them. Lord, all the others that have reservations, I ask you to clear the skies, that the planes can land. We pray for the other speakers that will be coming in by plane, Lord, that the, the sky shall clear up. We come against the powers, the elements. We command clear skies to come. Thank you, Jesus. I praise 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 you, Jesus, that you inhabit our praises. Lord, in our own selves, we can do nothing. Holy is the Lord and mighty is his name. Hallelujah. Mighty to deliver, mighty to save, mighty to heal. He is a mighty God that we serve. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I come against the spirits of infirmity in these bodies, the fevers, the sick stomachs, the rheumatism, the arthritis, the blindness, the deafness. In Jesus' name, I command infirmities to begin to leave this people this afternoon in Jesus' name. Breathe them out and let them go. Breathe them out and let them go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bring up. Cast out of yourself. Do something. Bring them up in Jesus' name. Cast him out in Jesus' name. Hate that infirmity. Hate it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All arthritis, arthritis, bitterness, and resentment, you come out too in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of those people in Jesus' name. All infirmities of the flesh. All fleshly infirmities of viruses and flu. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Patty, put your hand on, on Sister Badgett, would you please? Up the aisle here. If anybody needs a, a paper towel, Kevin and uh, Ruth, can you come? Are you too tired? Ruth, can you pray? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I command the evil powers to come out of, of Sister Badgett, the infirmities of her flesh. In Jesus' name, come out of her. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, sickness in her stomach, in Jesus' name. I rebuke you. The enemy re the enemy has to go because the Lord rebukes the enemy, in Jesus' name. The Lord rebukes you, Satan. Come out of these people, all infirmities of the flesh. Come out, in Jesus' name. Come out, tiredness, all tired spirits, in Jesus' name. Come out. Diabetes, come out. Fever, come out. All fevers come out of these people, in Jesus' name. Low-grade fevers, malaria fevers. Underland fever from drinking milk in Jesus' name, I command you to leave those people now in Jesus' name. Come out of her. Come out of her, Satan, in Jesus' name. I rebuke you, spirit coming from the enemy, torturing her, tormenting her. I bind you in Jesus' name. I bind you in Jesus' name. Put your hand on her, Barbara. Put your hand on, on her back in Jesus' name. Come out of her. Come out of her in Jesus' name. Come out of her now in Jesus' name. And throw these other flesh. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, I bind you in Jesus' name. Come out of her. Come out of her in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, lust. Come out, lust in Jesus' name. Come out, lust, I bind you. Come out, lust in Jesus' name. Come out, I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Come out of these people. All lust. All lust. Come out in Jesus. Lust for money. Lust for power. Come out in Jesus' name. I rebuke the enemy. Come out, religious spirits. 
Come out, Melinda. Spirits of Babylon, come out in Jesus' name. Spirits of Babylon, come out in Jesus' name. Spirits of fear, come out in Jesus' name. Come out, fear to come out in Jesus' name. Come on out, fear. Come out, fear, in Jesus' name. I break your power. I break your power over these people. Come out, religious spirits, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All fronts, all facades. Come out, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. A cow. She needs a cow. In Jesus' name. The Bible says believers will cast out evil spirits. If you're a believer, you will cast them out. In Jesus' name. Command you to go right now out of her in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come out, religious spirits. Super spirituality spirits, come out. Super spiritual. Come out in Jesus' name. Super spiritual spirits. Come out of her. Come out of all of them in Jesus' name. Come out of her. Super spiritual spirits. Come out in Jesus' name. Unnatural. Unnatural. Acting unnatural. In Jesus' name. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we break your power. We break your power. Nervousness, come out. All spirits of nervousness, come out in Jesus' name. All nervousness, come out in Jesus' name. I break your power in Jesus' name. I break your power in Jesus' name. Nervousness. Nervousness, come out in Jesus' name. And tension in Jesus' name. Come out of her. Come out of her. Tension. Come out of her. Tension in Jesus' name. Come out there in Jesus' name. Come out there in Jesus' name. Come up and pray. Come up and pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All religious spirits. Spirits coming from various denominations. Catholic spirits, I command you to come out with your idolatry. Come out, idolatry, in Jesus' name. Come out, spirits that would idolize preachers, in Jesus' name. I break your power over these people. All idolatry, come out in Jesus' name. Idolatry, come out in Jesus' name. Idolatry, I bind you. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, spirits of eternal security. I break your power now in Jesus' name. You spirits of eternal security, I break your power in Jesus' name. Spirits of error, all spirits of error, I break your power in Jesus' name. Spirits of error, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Spirits of error, religious spirits of error, I command you to come out in Jesus' name. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Spirits of Catholicism, idolatry, spirits of false religion and error, heresy, spirits of heresy, come out. Spirits of heresy, come out in Jesus' name. Spirits of heresy, come out in Jesus' name. Spirits of the false prophet, listening to false prophecies, I command that spirit of false prophecy to come out of these people this afternoon in Jesus' name. Every false prophet that has ever prophesied to you and you know about it, you know they were false command that to go out of you, out of your mind, out of your ears. In Jesus' name, spirit of false prophecy, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Spirit of false prophecy, come out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, come out in Jesus' name. False prophecy, spirit of the false prophet, I command you to come out. Spirit of Antichrist, that spirit that would come against the anointing of God. All spirits of Antichrist that would come against God's anointing. In Jesus' name. The anointing that is within you, there's always that Antichrist present trying to hold back the anointing of God. Come out, Antichrist, in Jesus' name. I bind you. Come on out. Come on out, in Jesus' name. That's right. Bring him up. Bring it up. Hate it. Hate it. Hate that spirit that comes against your anointing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All spirits of Antichrist. All spirits of Antichrist, I bind you. Come out, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, fear of cancer, fear of cancer, and cancer spirits, I break your power in Jesus' name. The spirits of fear of cancer, I bind you and I command you now in Jesus' name to manifest yourself and come out. Fears of cancer and spirits of cancer, infirmities of cancer. How many here know that you already have cancer? Does anybody here have cancer that you know about? 
In Jesus' name. Fear of cancer, come out. Fear of cancer, come out in Jesus' name. Fear of cancer, I bind you. Fear of the unknown, I bind you. Fear of the future, I bind you in Jesus' name. Come out. Fear of the future. Fear of the future, I break your power. Fear of the future, I break your power. Fear of losing all your money, I break your power, Satan. The spirits of fear, all kinds of fear, I want you to come out now in Jesus' name. There's a lot of fear in here yet. Let them go in Jesus' name. Hate that. Hate that spirit of fear. The Lord hasn't given you that. The enemy has given you that fear. That's right. That's right. Lay your hands on her and just let the spirit of fear come out of her. All the fear that she was born with, I command that to come out of her now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, all spirits of fear. Every sin and iniquity that we're bearing to the fourth generation because of our ancestors going to fortune tellers, playing with Ouija boards, water witching, fooling around with mind control books, ESP, any kind of witchcraft, any kind of palm reading, tea reading, all kinds of cults. I want all of those spirits to come out now in Jesus' name. Manifest yourself and come out now in Jesus' name. Unbelievable, Cassandra. I command you in Jesus' name to come out. All spirits of the fortune teller, spirits of the witch, come out now in Jesus' name. All curses of, of witchcraft, I break your power over these people in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I break your power. In Jesus' name, I break your power. In Jesus' name, I break your power. In Jesus' name, I break your power of witchcraft over these people. Curses. We break the curse of witchcraft. We break the curse of witchcraft. In Jesus' name. 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 Stay in an attitude of prayer. There's several people still getting delivered. I come against the spirit and curse of Moab, the curse of intermarriage in our lineage back ten generations, illegitimate children marrying out of the bloodline, marrying heathens. In Jesus' name, I break the power of incest and the curse and spirit of Moab. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. I break your power. All curses of Moab. Curses of Moab. In Jesus' name, I break your power. In Jesus' name. Intermarriage. Intermarriage. Illegitimacy coming from 400 years back. In Jesus' name. But you're bearing these sins and iniquities. I break that power. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All curses, all curses we break in Jesus' name. Curses of Moab. Satan, you're a defeated foe. You're going to have to go. The army of the Lord marches on. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Curse of incest, I break your power. Rape. Spirit of rape. Spirit of rape, I break your power off of this people in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, incest and rape come out of these people in Jesus' name. Homosexuality, lesbianism, I bind you. I command you to leave these people in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let them go. Let them go. Hate them. Curse of rape, incest, I break your power in Jesus' name. Shame and reproach, I break your power over these people in Jesus' name. Jesus bore our shame. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.